Hey guys and welcome back to a new episode of Mountain Blade Warband. Uh, firstly I'd like to just say that I know that we're in the height of the pandemic so I'm hoping that any and all of you who are watching this uh, stay safe, keep your hands clean, uh, do everything that your governments are telling you to do and like I say just keep safe. Um, so this is more of a updated kind of video. So this is how to create a kingdom, but also at the same time how to become a king. Um, I thought I'd just do a kind of new one because the old one is a little bit hard, uh, hard to hear, a little bit slow talking from me because I was concentrating too much on the game. And this one is a lot different. And I've got quite a few epic battles in this one. So I thought it might be worth literally just doing an update and carrying on our campaign with Ned Stark here as a vassal for the Kingdom of Rodox. Uh, currently he owns Rindyard Castle and uh, the Fife of Jamish. So yeah, I thought I'd do a how to create a kingdom video uh, with a lot of information, kind of more information than the last one I believe and a much better quality. So to start your own kingdom and therefore becoming a king, uh, what you have to do is you have to trigger a get out clause, if you will, with your king, your current king. So if you're still a vassal of a kingdom, what you need to do is continuously take castles of thieves, uh, continuously ask for them to be awarded to yourself, and then if the king gets to a point where he thinks you've got too much land, uh, compared to his other lords and his other lords won't like it he will then say right I'm actually gonna give this uh, castle or town to such and such a lord um, are you okay with this it then gives you an option of whether or not you can accept this humbly accept this or you can say stuff you I'm gonna uh, break away from you and I'm gonna be create my own kingdom and I'm gonna become king it gives you that option and at that very point that is how you create a kingdom and become a king. However, the problem is doing so is it relies heavily on your stats. It relies heavily on your renown, character ratings, and your right to rule. If you just jump straight in with a really poor right to rule and poor renown, and you're not prepared at all to start your own kingdom, you will get destroyed straight away. Because what this does, it, enacts, it straight away enacts a war between you and the old kingdom. But also, every other kingdom who deems you unworthy will also say, we're going to war with you because we don't recognize you. Very much in the case of, you are weak, we don't recognize you, you have no allies, we're now going to take your, your castles. So, so what you need to do is you need to build up your finances, your character renown, your right to rule and your honor rating definitely could take a better better uh, increase if you're like me so we're on to the finances here so as you can see here you just saw my budget report my budget report showed that I had owned loads of businesses already in different towns now to create a business you have to go to your guild master in the middle of town like I'm doing here but the problem here is that in this town it's owned by a lord who does not like me Therefore, he won't let me, well, they won't let me buy a business because that law does not like me. So like I say here, we've got the right to rule, the round, renown, and the honor rating. And I don't really have any friends, but I've got no enemies. But these are the main things that you need to focus on, as well as your financial report. So these are the big things. Because as soon as, like I say, you're in war, you get all your fives that come in direct control of any castles that you own are going to get raided. So therefore, your taxes are going to go down. Your tax income are going to go down from there. So you need to at least have several businesses in several different areas. You need to build up a, a good relation network with lords. But we're going to go into this in more detail. So like I said just then, what we need to do, I've got kind of a list of what you need to do to prepare yourself for, you know, for becoming your own kingdom and your own king. So, you need to gain good relations, relations with the lords, 
with the, at least with the best lords that you know, the ones that have probably the biggest family connections, uh, the most troops and the better castles. So we need to find relations with the best lords. Also, it would be a good idea to get good relations with the kings as well. Obviously, they control they control the kingdom, so it would be a good idea to become a little bit friendly with them. Therefore, it will lessen the blow later on. So obviously, to do this, to get better relations with lords, you need to do tasks for them. You need to do feasts. You need to attend feasts, but also attend feasts and do the tournaments. If you do all these things to gain good relations with lords, then that will help a lot when it comes to you becoming your own kingdom. Uh, therefore, if you hold really good relations with these lords and they decide to run, you know, denounce their, their old king and come across to yourself and ask, can I become a lord of your kingdom? You know, it's always good to have some decent, strong, friendly lords. Because the problem is when you become king and you start dishing out the territories is that whilst one lord will be very happy that you've dished out to one of the other lords, another lord will take it badly. So a lot of the lords will gain positive renown with you. A lot of them will decline with you. So having usually having lords that are actually family are quite decent because they support each other. So that is one good thing. So you need to get very good relations with them. Now, <clears throat> I know it's very difficult sometimes, but one of the things that I start thinking about if I'm, a, I'm thinking about becoming my own king and creating a kingdom is I need to look at where I'm trying to take castles. So the best thing to do in this case is if you're starting to, you're, you're already starting to think I'm gonna become my own king, you know, early game, start taking castles and towns right next to each other. So obviously I've got Rinya Cav Castle, so I want to try and take the enemy castle next door and the one next to that and the nearest town. Therefore, I've got my own territory already instead of it being split up between, you know, in Kingdom of Rodox, in the middle of Kingdom of Swadia, you know, try and keep it all together, you know, so then you're not having to try and bounce between areas, trying to having to go straight through enemy, enemy lines, try to defend your own castle. That's right at the other side of the map. So try and take good location but also castles that are better defending so ones that sieges give a bit more of a uh, bonus to the defender such as sometimes you've got the ones where uh, it's got a huge hill between the attackers and the actual like ladder um, them ones are usually quite decent uh, with the and if they've got the decent walls that come and surround the actual ladder or the or the siege tower, you know something like that. So then, if you set up right with your defences, you can easily defend these. That's that's quite major. Obviously, this gets less and less later on when you've got your own lords and everything like that, and you're helping yourself with with your troop loadouts and your upgraded troops but try and keep them all together uh, but also what you need to do is like my last video on a good army combination you need to have a good uh, strong setup already so your personal guard needs to be strong so for example right now I'm running with uh, Swadin Swadian man at arms ready to convert to Swadian knights. So I'm just running around with a cavalry unit. This isn't always the case. Usually, when I've got a lot more finances and I've got a big bit more of a party, I will load out with these guys as my main, my main, uh, my main squad. But I will also have a lot of Rodok and Swadian sharpshooters, as well as some infantry to just to protect them a little bit. Uh, but at the moment running around with a cavalry unit has been very good um like in this battle here i am completely outnumbered i think it was three to one um and obviously these guys had a lot of cavalry and a lot of upgraded units um but my boys were able to actually swamp them so that's good next moment you have to think about your finances so <laughs> you need a lot of money like i said earlier 
you need to be gaining businesses so going to the guild masters seeing if uh, the lord and the, and the town itself are happy with you um, because then you can actually buy the businesses and get the income from there problem is though is when you create your kingdom and you go to war in effect with um, the original kingdom or whoever or whoever goes to war with yourself uh, wherever your businesses lie in them towns they will be cut off so that money can't come to you so obviously the good idea is to spread out your businesses within different kingdoms because potentially not all kingdoms are going to go to war with you and if they do some kingdoms you know exit that war a lot quicker so you get them finances quicker so that is one of the best things to do um, so it would also be a good idea to build up a big bank account as well right now the reason why I'm only running around with about 34 you know swadian swadian man at arms is because these guys cost almost a thousand a week was it a week or is it a month I can't remember I think it was a week <laughs> Um, so obviously that plus the guys who are garrisoning my castle is quite a lot. If I if I've got a troop troop trooper uh, expenditure of about two thousand a week and I'm not taking in that much money, then that's not great because I know in this video that I had another budget report where I was only I was about minus two hundred. Not bad, but at least I'm getting all these battles capturing loads of people selling loads of equipment I'm obviously easy gain, gaining that money there um, as well as obviously raiding caravans and potentially raiding villages only problem with raiding villages is obviously if you get to a point where you want to recruit then villages ain't gonna let you recruit so we're also gonna go into that moment there so you need to hold territory that has a good troop uh, recruitment and obviously hopefully these are villages you've not raided before because you've got you're gonna lose that odd fife that is controlled by a different territory so the cattle and towns that you take and the fives that belong to them you need to make sure that you're friendly with them fives because they're gonna be they're gonna become very very um your big building blocks for your new army so you need to do tasks for them clear out bandits because unfortunately at the start of the war unless you get loads of war, lord, good lords that come to your aid and become your your lords these are going to get looted they're going to get burned and you have to wait a long time for you to be able to recruit from them so therefore you need to at least have in the surrounding fives maybe even in the enemy fives um, villages that are very friendly to yourself because they will still let you recruit I believe so that is a very big one because you've got to be able to start replenishing your numbers because you're going to be in constant battles because the only way you're going to end these wars is by either going on the defense attacking everything that comes into your territory grinding them down or if you go and the attack yourself but obviously near your own borders and just take out everything like i say again uh, being careful of any war parties that are coming near you because obviously potentially you're going to get uh, you're gonna get surrounded and if that's the case potentially you may lose a lot of good a lot of good troops and you can't always afford to have to restart again with a completely new batch of troops so keep that in mind um, and like I say it would always be very useful to capture a major town and have it in your name before becoming your own king because then that gives you access to the tavern taverns the markets and it also gives you a very strong uh, strong sieging point but obviously you then need to fill that with loads of troops so keep that into mind uh, so like I say you need a high renown so then people want to people know you and want to come and fight for you uh, honor rating as well same thing and like I say right to rule right to rule is how high uh, people think you are well like I say having the right to rule should you be king should you not do we deem you worthy of being a king or do we think you're a weak person just pretending that is the right to rule for that one um, so so 
So, like I say, we need to think about finances, we need to think about lords, relations, everything like that. And get into that point. Get into that point, though, with your king where he no longer thinks you're worthy of gaining more and more territory and getting too strong can take a lot of time. But at the same time, it's, it's, it's a case of it's a long drawn out process because you have to get to that point of saying, of him saying, no, you're not worthy of getting any more because if you just up and leave, you lose your territory, you lose your castles because you're, you're the one who's leaving, but you can't take that territory away. But, and on the flip side of that one actually, when you become your own king, and your lords, if any of your lords start taking a sharp decline in relations with you, it is always best for you to boot them first. So exile them first, kick them out of your kingdom, because then that means that they can't take that territory with you. You're evicting them, instead of them denouncing you, uh, betraying you, and they get to keep that castle, they get to keep that little bit of territory. So you lose territory if you let it lord, go sour and you let him take away the castle so like I say it's easy to be done um, but it can be a long-winded process so obviously like I say you just need to trigger that trigger that uh, conversation with your king force that into a situation you need to be prepared though for the situation so like I say gain territory that are very close to each other gain the finances Gain the troops, gain the relations with lords, having a good good marriage will also help. Because then obviously she will actually be able to help you um, plan feasts to keep your lords happy and everything like that. So I hope this has helped. Um, if you have any, any other questions, make sure to put a comment down below. Um, if you think there's a better way to do it or if there's anything you think I've missed please like I say chuck it in the comments make sure to like and subscribe to the channel as I'm gonna be trying to churn out a few more videos uh, whilst we're in this pandemic uh, make sure to keep yourself safe and well and like I say go back and if you want go back and watch the rest of the videos in this playlist um, as I'm going to be continuing obviously with the campaign with Ned Stark here and carrying on whilst um, trying to give you as many details as possible um, unfortunately because of this pandemic and the fact that I'm not at work at the moment uh, this has severely dented my hopes at the moment of getting a better rig a computer rig as I, if we weren't in this pandemic I was going to be able to afford one uh, unfortunately, that might not be a case for a good while uh, until we come out of this pandemic. Like I say, keep, your, keep yourself safe, uh, enjoy the rest of the video and the other videos in the collection. And like I say, give us a, give us a subscribe, give us a comment um, if you've got any questions or, like I say, if you think I've missed anything. And back to my other video. What do you think is the best army combination in the game? Uh, what do you like and which is the kingdom that you think is the worst? Which kingdom do you think is the best? Chuck them in the comments below. I will always read them and comment on them. Thank you very much, guys.